<laughs> now, you've just been uh, over at the shared pathway and launching that. How did that go? Yeah, really good. And it's an area I think that will be well utilised by people in Dubbo and visitors as well. One of the things that was actually perfect timing for it was while we were doing the official opening, the unveiling of the plaque and the cutting of the ribbon, a few joggers went past while we were actually doing the opening. And I thought, well, that's absolutely perfect. Someone out walking their dog went past. This is the great thing that we have in Dubbo, Chris. And this weather at the moment is absolutely perfect for it. The whole track of Riley Cycleway around the river is well utilised. But one of the things that I think, and certainly Council agrees, is that we've got this area behind the CBD that maybe in years gone by, quite sensibly, when Dubbo was being built up, the CBD turned its back on the river to a certain extent because we wanted to get up away from the river, get away from flooding. So we're in a much better position than some other cities where they do get flooding that goes through their CBD. Mm. So that's good from that perspective. But at the same time then, we probably take, don't take advantage of that beautiful area we have down there. Now, Track of Riley helps us because people go along and use it, but we want people to stop along there. So the shared pathway essentially goes from where Church Street is, and this is down on the river, and goes up a block to just before where you've got the car, the outdoor car park next to the Devo Square Shopping Centre. So in that section there, we've now got a much wider pathway, not the crushed granite like we used to have. That pathway has got four spots along there that are viewing areas, cantilevered viewing platforms, for example. We want people to be out walking their dog, going out for a, a chat with friends. We want them to stop in those areas, just sit down, have a coffee, have a chat, just take their time and enjoy looking out over the beautiful river. We've also got a terraced platform area, so it, it basically drops down in terraces. And that's a bit of a nod back to before the 1930s, where in the side, in the riverbank side, there used to be cut into the side, basically large steps where people would sit on the riverbank and watch while their kids went in the river and had a swim, or, or friends might have gone in there. In fact, I love this article I found years ago. It was back from around the 1930s in the local newspaper. They were highly critical in this article of council of the day because council was proposing at the time to build an Olympic-sized swimming pool. And the commentary in the article said, this bunch of councillors are crazy. Why would you build an Olympic swimming pool when you've got a perfectly good river and mm. everyone can swim in the river there? Why do we need a swimming pool? So there, there is that bit of a, a nod to the past by having a, a small series of steps that we've built into the riverbank side there that, again, you can go down and watch there. And the boat ramp, the boat ramp was looking pretty old and tired. There were some ruts in there. People complained about some of the loose gravel there. It was hard when they're pulling their boat out of the river then. So we basically fixed up that entrance to the boat ramp and also extended it because the old boat ramp went along and then dropped off a bit of an edge. And if you went a little bit too far with your boat, it dropped over the edge and good luck Oops. getting your boat out then. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So now that goes in probably another three metres past where the old edge used to be. So a beautiful area. But that's stage one, Chris. Mm. The exciting part about this is stage two, which is where Ollie Robbins Oval is. The idea there will be to build a staging area there so that events can be held there with the right equipment that you need, the right connections that you need there. And you've got that natural amphitheater, small amphitheater there you've got now. So you can take advantage of that. And then this shared pathway will serve a huge purpose because it's actually strong enough to allow trucks to come along there. There's bollards in place so people can't drive along there normally, but with an event on, Remove those bollards, vehicles can go along there, they can be unloaded for equipment you might need, staging equipment, whatever it might be, and actually run an event there. We've got to get onto that stage two. We, we basically haven't gone out to tender or anything like that with stage two yet. But that whole area, absolutely fantastic. So take a look at it, take advantage of it. It's a great start then. It is, yeah, absolutely right. And what about for the parking situation around that area? Is it going to be easier for people to park their vehicle so they can take advantage of the walkway? So we've moved the parking... Or pathway, I should say. Yeah, we've moved the, the parking ever so slightly. The parking used to be directly as you turned in off Bly Street on the right-hand side. There were about eight car parks. So we've basically filled those in now. That's just grass area there now. And as you go along the pathway ever so slightly, there's a parking area on the left-hand side there just near where the second boat ramp goes down. So there's that little section there where parking will be. But the area where parking used to be, that's a, another stage with the events precinct that's probably a, a stage three or stage four. So the parking has been lost there, but we replaced with pretty much the same parking. Maybe we lost one or two spots there, but pretty much the same parking over the other spot. But you've got parking along the back behind, mm. say, Riverdale there as well. So there's parking along there. And a bit of a shout out to the Tri Club, the Triathlon Club, 
they actually gave us money to build two other sets of stairs to get into the water when they're staying their triathlons. And I love the fact that we have organisations in Dubbo, the Macquarie River Titan Mud Run, sorry, the Macquarie, Macquarie Titan Mud Run, for example. You've got the Dubbo Stampede. You've got those organisations that give us money to help facilitate some extra activities around their river. A park Run uses the river or that, that river area every Saturday morning. So you've got these other organisations that take advantage of the river, but mm. also give us money. So the Triathlon Club said, we'd love more stairs. We understand that's not in your budget. We'll give you some money to put those stairs in. So that's a great community contribution. Now, you've got a, a lot of community committees out there. You were just talking about some of them then. Uh, infrastructure and planning, environment committees, so forth. What's all that about? What's been happening there? We've got three standing committees, and one of those, you just mentioned then, the Infrastructure Planning and Environment Committee. So there's three standard standing, uh, standing committee meetings that we have each month. That was the meetings we had last night. In those, typically when we have various committee meetings, we feed them through. And it was interesting, I was at a conference earlier on this week, speaking at a conference on Wednesday this week, and one of the things I did speak about at that conference was the process about getting the community involved in council decisions. One of the things that I'm a big believer in, Chris, is having those various committees where those committees, you have people from the community, they can nominate to be a part of that committee. Typically, if you nominate, you're pretty much a part of that committee. We do go through a vetting process, but most people that nominate are part of that committee. And then they can feed their ideas. They're not making decisions of council, that's up to councillors at a council meeting, but they're actually feeding ideas in, but also they're aware of what's happening. It's a two-way street. I love the fact that they're out in the community and they are on top of some of the things that's happening in an area they're interested in, but also they get to feed their ideas. And so it's more avenues to get ideas to feed into council. So I'm a big fan of, of those various committees. Those three standing committees are more formal committees, but we've got close to, I think 16 off the top of my head, committees that are out there in the community that community members are a part of. And they all get in contact with you about what's going on in their reign of uh organization and let you know what's going on well they there are meetings on a regular basis so they will sit down formally and different councils are a member of those different committees so i might be a member of say two or three of those different committees but different members are a com mm. uh, different councils are a member of different committees and then they feed through and, and feed that information up so it's a great way i mean anyone can contact me at any time i advertise my phone number 0418 639 053 i've got my mail or email address mayor at dubbo.nsw.gov.au send me emails make phone calls get in contact whatever way you 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 know, it's convenient to you, but those committees are a more formal process to come along and present some of those ideas and also be up to date with what's happening in terms of various things that are happening related to those committees. Mm, so you're not only just here in Dubbo, you also have lots of areas, other areas you have to deal with like Wellington. So what's been going on down there? Well, there's the Wellington Town Committee, another one of those committees. And uh, an interesting part of that process, Chris, one of the things that happened there with that one at the last meeting was we had a rhino, the, the fiberglass rhinos that you see mm -hmm. in various locations. There was one of those in Wellington. Now, it got to the stage where it was a bit old and tired and needed to be freshened up. And so we took that away to do that. But we thought, well, does the Wellington community really want money spent on a rhino to be back in the Wellington community. So through the Wellington Town Committee, we took that as one of the agenda items to say, do you want to see a rhino replaced? If you if you do, what do you want it to look like? What sort of design do you want on there? Or if you don't want to see it done, then what else would you like to see that money spent on? So that was a, a great example that you've given there. The Wellington Town Committee said, we don't think we particularly want a rhino there. There's not as important to Dubbo, uh, sorry, to Wellington as it is to Dubbo. Mm. So, we could have that money spent on something else. So that's exactly what we'll do as a council now. We'll take notice of that. We'll go through and formally resolve to basically change where that funding goes to give it a better outcome for the community of Wellington. Okay, so you've had a bit of a progress report going on for the Dubbo Regional Housing Roadmap. How's that going? Mm, I'd like to say faster. It is an issue with Dubbo, there's no doubt about it at all, that we've got people that want to move to Dubbo. I would say, Chris, they want to come to Dubbo and listen to DCFM, but maybe they listen to streaming wherever they might be as well. No, 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 they're listening to us. <laughs> but uh, they, they want to be here and there's not enough housing. We aren't going to go and build 100 houses for people that move here tomorrow, but we need to make sure that we've got a strategic process and strategic planning to make sure that developers can build that housing and people feel confident that's going ahead and that's happening. And so that's that whole housing roadmap, looking at different areas in Dubbo, what housing is happening there or what housing is potentially going to happen there. I'd love to see more housing in Dubbo because we do have this problem where people mm. want to move to Dubbo and there's not enough housing for them. So we need to have 
the vision. We need to make sure we've got the planning in place to make sure that's happening. And developers can do the work in terms of building those houses. But on the back of our 3D printed toilet, which we've talked about before, there's one organisation that's looking to bring, to start with six, but their big picture plan is to build 60 affordable homes in Dubbo, and they want to do it with 3D printing. They're going to start off with those six as a, a bit of a test case, a trial, and then expand out to those 60. So by council being a bit innovative and basically breaking the mould for the idea of 3D printed infrastructure, the toilets in this case, it's actually highlighted that this could be built here in Dubbo, and so you've got other developers who want to do that. The other report that came out recently was a report by an organisation called PRD, and they rated the 10 best locations, regional locations in Australia to invest in. They had a number in Queensland, a number in New South Wales, some in Victoria. And so they said, here are the best 10 regional locations to invest in for a whole range of reasons. They had various criteria. And no surprise here, Chris, Dubbo was one of those. So it was really encouraging investors to mm. invest in Dubbo. Now, for, for people that can't get housing, that's good news yes. because that means that investors that have got money to spend and they want to invest somewhere wisely are more likely to look at Dubbo to invest. That means they might be more likely to build housing in Dubbo, which means people that are trying to rent housing in Dubbo are, are more likely to be able to find somewhere to live. So that was good reflection on the state of Dubbo, but also good news for people that want to move to Dubbo. It's also helped bringing in tradesmen to the town to help build these buildings. If anyone was a tradesman out there and thought, oh, I, I want to move to somewhere where I know I'm going to have guaranteed work, well, you're not going to get guaranteed work, but you're going to be pretty certain there's going to be a, a lot of work for you to come over just what's happening already, but also with our renewable energy zone here, Chris, mm. we know there are going to be approximately 6,000 people over the next five years that need to be living in this renewable energy zone. So you know you're going to be pretty certain of having some good work going ahead. All right, so you had a bit of an annual report as well about the drinking water management system. What was that all about? So this is a process that we've changed at council where you remember that there was no fluoride being put in the water mm -hmm. and unfortunately the last council didn't tell the community about that and I think that's yeah. horrific that the community was kept in the dark about that. We, once we found out about it, we let the community know and we're taking steps to address that and by September this year we'll have fluoride back in the water. But one of the things that was interesting out of that process is there was a report done by our staff each year that goes to the government and that report talks about all the sorts of different components of the water, the drinking water that we treat here in Dubbo uh, and, and Dubbo LGA. And as a part of that process, that never formally came to council. So we've changed that now. So that report goes to council so that at least if councillors wanted to hide anything that was happening there, this report comes to council. So you can't really hide anything that's not happening there or not mm. happening correctly. So this is really an update on that, a report on that, just to show what happened with our drinking water over the last year. So it's just a, an update for the community. Some people will go, yep, that's great. There's a, a, a governance process in place there. Other people might want to look over that report and look at that in great detail. Now, uh, this is a good thing. Uh, you're going to be looking into some more disabled parking in Brisbane Street. Uh, this is a, a very small component, Chris. It's just a, basically a change of some parking there to add a disabled parking spot. So mm. it's not lots of extra disabled parking. It's one spot, but that was identified as an area where we thought it was worthwhile adding one disabled parking spot. So again, keep in mind that because these were committees that we went through, all of these things we're talking about are recommendations from the council through to the council meeting in two weeks' time because the committees don't make any decisions apart from, I think you've got some paperwork in front of you there. Yep. At the bottom of the second page, there's a, an issue there with a tender. So the tender is the one thing that committees can make a decision on. So that tender that went through for... Um, it was Asphalt. Yeah, yeah, it was Asphalt that's spot on for Bitcher Pay we awarded that tender to. That's now done, that's finished, completed, and that's public. The, the company that won that tender is now public. All the rest of the information was confidential in terms of the prices, the other mm -hmm. people that put tenders in. But tenders, that decision is made by committees or council, but all the rest of the things we're talking about, including I think the one you're going to talk about with the RSL Club, they're all recommendations from the committee meetings to council. And in two weeks' time, we have the council meeting. That's when we'll have final resolutions for those. Yes, you uh, wanted to uh, touch on this, the uh, value to negotiate with the Dubbo RSL Club on the old Dubbo Bowling Club update. So what's been going on with that? So you'll remember that the, go back a couple of stages, there was a land swap deal done by the last council. And I must admit personally, I'm not a big fan of land swaps, but mm -hmm. it was done. So there was a land swap deal done. There was some land in Keswick that had been identified that the RSL Club would like to use to build a club on. Mm -hmm. And there was the old Dubbo City Bowling Club, 74 Windy Warrior Street, sometimes called the Greens, which is just near the Cultural Centre. 
And so there was a land swap deal done between the RSL Club and Dubbo Regional Council to swap those two parcels of land. Dubbo would own, Dubbo Regional Council would own the, the Greens and the land in Keswick would be owned by the RSL Club. That went through, there were a fair few steps for it to go through and in the end, the RSL Club formally rescinded that land swap deal. They had the power to do that. That was written into the contract. They rescinded that deal, so that deal was off. Mm -hmm. So we no longer had any part of the process to own the bowling club or the, the Greens and the RSL Club didn't have the ability to own the land in Keswick they wanted for their club. So that was off. Then the RSL Club, because they then owned the Greens and they didn't really need it, they went out to an EOI process, expression of interest process, for that parcel of land and that building there. And we as council put in a formal offer to that. Again, I can't talk about the value of that, but we put in a formal offer for in that expression of interest process, as I'm sure other organisations did. In the meantime, we got a separate valuation on the land in Keswick, and so we had those two going separately. The RSL Club then came back to us and said, um, we would like to purchase the land in Keswick that we previously had a land swap deal done on. Mm -hmm. We'd like to purchase that for a certain price. I can't mention the price. And the expression of interest that we put in for the bowling club, the RSL Club said, and we would accept your offer for that particular parcel of land, conditional upon you accepting the offer that we're <laughs> making for Keswick land. I know it sounds complicated. So <laughs> last yeah. night um, in the committee meetings, that was discussed, that was debated at length. And in the end, council was making a recommendation through to the council meeting to go ahead with that deal where we would sell the RSL Club the Keswick land at a certain value and we would buy the Greens at a certain value. After that is formally resolved and that deal is done, we will then make those values public. But at the moment, I can't talk about those exact values, just the fact that there's a recommendation from the committee meetings to go ahead with that deal where we buy one pass of land and we sell another pass of land and that offer's conditional. Okay, so have you got any idea of what you might use the old bowling club for when you do eventually obtain it? No, and that was one of the issues that I had previously when they'd done the land swap deal. They didn't have a strategic purpose for that. We still don't really have a strategic purpose for that, except to say that the area around there has got a lot of land that's owned mm. by council or is crown land that is potentially managed by council. So you've got the Western Plains Cultural Centre, you've got the sporting areas there, number two and number three ovals just nearby there. You've got the Paramount Tennis Club there, which is sitting on, on land that yep. isn't owned by them. And so that's public land as well. So that would fill in that gap and complete that area, if you like. So uh, overall, there's probably potential use for all of that. And I think that's where councils are thinking around that. But we wouldn't have a purpose to use that for tomorrow as such. Uh, well, it'll be good to see what comes in the future for that land because it's definitely a lot of uh, council run facilities around there. Maybe you can put something that we can use as well in the future. Yeah, and certainly for the area in Keswick and that parcel of land that was utilised previously with Keswick, certainly that area of land, building a club there, that population is exploding out around yes, the South Lakes yes. Keswick area. So having some sort of facility up there would make sense as well. And uh, I'm sure the people up there would love having a bowling club. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure whether they do a bowling club. I think the original plans they had there were for more a club oh, okay. rather than a bowling club. Okay. And, and it might have been a, a green area as part of that. Mm -hmm. But overall, some sort of club there, some sort of RSL club, a, a mini version, if you like. I guess we'll find out in the future. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, one more fun little thing, which is what I've never heard of before. The tractor trek is coming. <laughs> That's a bit of a fun one to finish on today. Yeah, the tractor trek is it's a charity organisation and they do literally, as the name suggests, they get a bunch of tractors and they go on a trek. You can imagine they don't go on the roads at a very high speed. So no. some of these tractors are very old. I've actually seen them come through the city previously. They look like some very old classic tractors and a whole variety of tractors there. They do it at the fundraiser. We have to give permission for them, along with the police have to give permission for them to use some of the roads they go on because obviously it does hold up traffic and so you can't just go and put an event on the road without getting permission from mm -hmm. the local, in this case local government, and the police as well. So essentially, again, that's a recommendation from the committee meeting to say to council, yes, we agree with that and we agree there'll be some traffic hold-ups in place there, but it's okay for what it'll be used for, and we're happy with the safety around that, and happy with all the, the various 
activities I have around that to let people know, i.e. a follow car or a lead car to let people know there's a, a large group of tractors and there'll be some traffic hold-ups there. So it's all about being safe on the roads. Okay, so uh, get involved with that because when it happens, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm <laughs> sure that there's going to be heaps of people that will love to go and see this happen on the road. As long as they're not those steam ones with the big metal wheels because it might dig up the bitumen. Yeah, I, I haven't seen ones <laughs> that old on there. It's, it's slightly more modern than that, but maybe mu not much more modern. Okay, well, anyway, it's been a pleasure having a chat to you and uh, don't forget to name the pathway after me. Right, I'll just keep that in mind. So the, the Chris's pathway. Chris, Chris pathway, <laughs> Chris's pathway. Just to finish off on very quickly, I'm dancing tonight. Dancing I use in a very loose way. Uh -oh. I'm trying to dance tonight in a cancer fundraiser oh, called Dancing with the Stars tonight. And there's eight dancers there and we're all raising money. If you go to my social media sites, you've got, I've got a link there if you want to donate some money to see how poorly I dance. And I've got some examples of me practicing. Oh, I started dear. rehearsals Wednesday this week, so <laughs> it doesn't look very pretty, Chris. So please help me out and donate some money to cancer oh, via that yeah, link that sounds there. like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be posting that up on the uh, council website when you do it? I've got it on the, the Matthew Dickerson social media pages at the moment. So if you just search for me on Facebook, or Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, you'll find some examples of my poor quality dancing. But more importantly, the link there where you can go and donate some money for cancer and where research. where can people go see that? Well, it's at the, the, the tickets have already done. Oh, it's sold, already sold out. out. Sold oh. out, Chris, believe it or not. Sold out. Oh, they've got to go see you, Dad. <laughs> and that's at the Devil Regional Theatre and Convention Centre tonight. So it'll be interesting, I hope. <laughs> well, it's always interesting when you do things like that. You do a lot for our community, and we thank you for it, Matthew. So thanks again for coming in and talking to us about the local council meeting which you've had, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Chris. All right, we'll be back into some more music right after this on DCFM 88.9.